at this, man. Freaking huge. Yum, 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 yum. Hey, okay. we're going to do a uh, uh, guillotine press. Actually, I'm going to go through a whole series of incline uh, way to work to fill up your upper chest. So we're going to do guillotine presses. And we'll have, so first thing we're going to take guillotine press now. So we'll do that. You're going to position the bench more further away than you normally would when you're doing a, um, a chest press. So we're not going to be doing a traditional chest press. So when you're going to start, push the chest, I mean push the bench back. And don't use um, a bar, like a, a regular barbell. Um, use, a, use a Smith machine first, like this, like we have. It's safer. Um, don't use dumbbells doing a guillotine because you might tend to, you know, have an injury. So use a, a Smith machine to get the form down and then when you're ready, you could transition to a, a regular bar that's just free floating without any assist like this. Is. So <clears throat> it's called a guillotine press because it's gonna chop off your neck. So we're gonna go to your neck level. And as with all my all the chest workouts, you're gonna have your shoulders back, you retract your shoulders, chest high, a slight arch, not we're not really doing a, a crazy arch, slight arch. Okay. And depending on how wide you are, we just determine what kind of grip you have. So for me, I have really wide shoulders and, and lats, so I'm gonna go first finger to the to the band. Some people might be middle finger or even even like um, you know pinky finger. That just depends on how wide you are and, and how you feel comfortable. You shouldn't be going this wide doing it, and you shouldn't be doing a close tricep uh, press. I tend to do first finger and also tongue width from here. Just to get different angles. It's all working the upper chest. So we're gonna set up. Coming down negative to neck. Squeeze up. Okay. And my elbow, I'm not keeping my elbow in this position. I'm not keeping it in the same plane as the bar. I'm keeping it underneath. If you keep the bar, the elbows up like this, you're gonna hurt your shoulders. Keep them underneath. Pass the bar. Almost, almost like a, sorry, almost like a, a power lifter. They bring the elbows underneath to squeeze up. So we're gonna do a power lifting position, not a, not a position where we're, we're wide with the bar. Like a normal chest press. We're gonna be under. Push up. Okay. You can also do close. Okay, that boss. <laughs> but I'm gonna be forward. Underneath. We do not. I'm not flaring my lat now and pushing up you my toes back. Slow. What tends to happen is um, if you don't keep your shoulders sorry. If you don't keep your shoulders, uh, holes and back tight together, you're gonna tend to flare out and, and, and have that winging I talked about. So, in doing that, you're gonna lose your chest because we're now we're doing a a, a shoulder and tricep workout because we're, we're concave. You want to always keep your chest up to so focus on your chest. This is all chest. This is all arms and shoulders. Put more emphasis on the upper chest. If you lock the elbows too much, you're gonna feel your triceps and gonna cause arthritis in the future. Oh, never lock the joint. Now you cheat. <laughs> so you can see a glass set. He tends to, you know, push up, drag his lats out and all that. That tells me that. Well, he, you know, he kind of already did chest. So your chest is already sore. I know that. So that happens to drop the weight, you know, because that means it's too hard for you and you're going to use other muscle groups to help you in your chest press, but you don't want. You want to focus on 
your chest uh, and not even though you cannot isolate your chest because it's a compound movement, you still want to try to focus on it without winging your, your lats or, you know, and keep moving more of your arms with it. So, um, don't let, also, if, if it's too heavy and you want to do like a power lift with this, I recommend putting a, a stopper on so that way if you do fall to your limit, it's going to stay there and it won't, it won't decapitate you. But it's probably a good thing because it's going to decapitate you if you go um, too low and you just are having a stopper. So if you feel like you're going to go heavier, maybe the last set and you're scared, put a stopper to make sure that before it, it decapitates you, it stops right before that happens. So I, I do that when I do like three or four, three plates on this. Just to be safe. We're going to do another way to pull up your chest. And a lot of people do this wrong because they uh, the position of the elbow is very important with this movement. If you have a bent elbow, it's similar to doing a you know a, a, a rare row, like a machine, or just like a regular machine. So if you have a wide grip, if you're doing it with a bar and your elbows are bent and you're going back, you'll be working your back muscles. You can disregard your back muscles because we are stretching them and we are using them a bit. But we're going to do a lockout on the elbow to focus on the, on the chest muscle. So, you position the dumbbell on the, on the bench next to you. So we're going to be keeping your, your traps and your shoulders on the, on the edge of the bench. Okay. The position of your hip, if you, if you keep, your, your, keep your hip straight, that's fine. But I don't want to see you rocking up and down, that's cheating. So, if you're going to have this position, keep it tight, and don't rock forward and back. Okay? So, we're going to grab the dumbbell in a diamond position. Okay? Straight. We're not bending. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Keep your chest. Pushing forward. So, we're trying to squeeze up and chest. Great. Show the width. Squeeze the chest. We want to squeeze the chest a little bit. If you keep a bend like this, if you bend, you move the back doing a roll movement. So we don't want to bend the elbow. We want to keep it straight. Have good stretch in the chest. So stretch. Chest. And squeeze. Flex again, filling up the chest. When you finish, turn to the side, and you're good. Alright, so I'm gonna have you do it. <laughs> Just in time. Just in time. So, grab the shoulders, back. Only just grab the shoulders. Are you? Yeah, yeah. So you got time to position. Keep your arms locked out. Okay. Keep it up with that fire. Keep your stomach tight. We're gonna go back to your shoulder width so you can touch it. Right there, keep your arms straight, come up, and squeeze it just like you push it all the way through. Right there. Right there, it's fine. Squeeze it just every time. Yeah, you wanna hold for it. If you bend the elbow, you're gonna work your lat more. We got a close grip, focus in more on the upper chest. You should feel it kind of way. Always breathe out coming against gravity. A lot of people what they do is they add heavy weights and they start to do a... I'll show you what they do. <laughs> yeah, they start to... While they go back, they bring the hip up and then while they go down, up, they go bring the hip down. And that's cheating. You don't want to use a swing, a sink, like a, a seesaw movement. Keep the hip either straight or slightly bent without moving the hip. Okay? The people they do this little seesaw thing, that's cheating. Whatever you're doing is fine. And also, you can do that, fine, you can do that. And um, you thought you thought it was your mid back, right? You thought it was your mid back, right? So you put your mid back on here? Oh yeah. Yeah, see, that's another problem. I mean, there's nothing wrong with putting your mid back on it. The problem with that is, 
is you're gonna tend to go past the low the low range, and then your hips gonna come up. So you, so you're trying to compensate for the for the back. This way, you don't have to worry about it. Once the shoulder touch the the base, the base, that's it. You're fine. You're safe, and you're not extending your hip, hyper extending your hip too much. So don't do too heavy, don't go too heavy on this. At least not for the first three sets. Get warmed up because it's gonna pull. If you go too far, you're gonna uh, hurt your rotator cuff and tear it. So keep your shoulder and traps on the bench only. And once you're totally touch the, the back of the, the back of the bench, go forward. We're keeping your arms locked out. Go bend your elbow. If you want, you can have sorry, you can have another bench or some blocks behind the bench as a guide. So when you touch the box, you go forward, okay? If you want to do that, okay? You can also simulate this on the floor. You're on the mat, if you want on the mat or on the floor, and it's really safe. Um, if you're going to do on a bench like this, don't go too heavy because you might tend to do that whole, uh, you know, seesaw movement, which you don't want, right? So, so another way to work up your chest is, it's uh, similar to a fly, but we're going to change the angle of it. So we're going to be up. Um, and it cause more problems. So we'll go to just uh, hip width. Right here. We're gonna come up. We're not going to wide, we're doing a wide five. Close to hips. We're gonna bring your chest up. Knee together. Squeeze the upper chest. Flex it in. Down slow. The hip. Up again. I don't think my knee will. We're 25. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, why you can't ask that? Because it's not easy. Um, I think sometimes do a super set from an uh, incline press. Okay, like I would, it's already set up for an incline right now. So with the Smith machine, I would do um, an incline press right into a, a, a fly coming up, and then the last set I would do a guillotine, like we just how we just finished doing. But it's all upper chest. You want to make your upper chest, pull up your upper chest. It's one of the best workouts to do. So we're still keeping the arch in the back. Chest high. Don't go too low like that. So, I want to see that. That's it. When they come up, straight. Keep it up. You pull it back. Chest high. Right there. That's it. See Come up and squeeze your chest. They don't, they don't got to touch. Keep them separated. Both feet, both feet. Now come up. There we go. Right, that one more. Up here, up here. Come on. Your chest is gone. Oh, yeah, my chest is gone. Stop, wait, stop on the feet. Stop on the feet. Stop on the feet. Come down and come up. Close, 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 close. Come up. Squeeze it. Come on, back. Come on, down. Up, come up. Yeah, not even. We're just simulating the same fly movement we get when we're coming up. Okay. Another thing you can do, if you, if you really want to be a badass, right, you could do an incline setup like we have here. Smith machine, do regular incline press. Transition, incline press. Transition to a, a fly coming up and then go into a push up with your feet on top of the bench. So you could do like a tricep, going this way, that full upper chest. If you still have enough energy, keeping your head straight. Right. So 
you do like a, like a, not a super set, but a tri set? Incline chest press, upright fly, and an and incline push up, your upper chest should be pretty much gone, all right? Then, I would say the last thing to do is a guillotine, because that's a good stretch on your chest. But, um, no, his chest is gone, be and your chest is gone too, because you did chest. chest. So, um, the yeah, the position on the on the wrist, sorry, I mean, the wrist is always uh, coming up, so supinated, and up together. Never, never rotate your wrist down, always keep a supinated grip. You can do it with a bar if you want. Um, but you might hit, you might hit your legs, so I recommend you do dumbbells because you can get more stabilization, use more fibers with a, with a dumbbell. Do it with a cable too. Get the cables from the bottom and come up same way, but uh, you know cables are kind of you know I use cables for like a fly on the on the ball, not for this. I think I think for for this kind of movement, it's best to do it with them. But. Uh, if I say cable the bat, I made a video about flies. I say the best best thing to do with cables is a fly on the ball. But for this, I say hard heavy weight will be best. Don't go heavy on this. This is a really small muscle group. And I'll say maybe start with 10 pounds, go up to 15, 20, 25. I do maybe 35 max. I do 35 max. That's half doing an incline press back to back. And if you feel like you're if you're a badass, do the push afterwards and take a break and do the same set again. That's gonna fill up your upper chest. And that's it for that. So, any questions? Any questions? Alright, good. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe. That's not sexy. Making you. That's a long video. <laughs>